Hey everybody, and welcome back. In this section, we're going to take a look at setting up two different PHP clients that we'll use to write some code to interact with our Elasticsearch server. In this section, we'll start off by configuring the official Elasticsearch PHP client. Then we'll take a look at configuring popular open source Elastica client. Then we'll take a look at setting up some data structures, generating and importing some sample data using the Elasticsearch PHP client. And finally, take a look at setting up data structures, generating and importing some sample data using the Elastica client. In this video, we're going to take a look at configuring the Elasticsearch PHP client. This is the official client released by the Elasticsearch creators. In this video, we'll create a new controller where we'll write all of our code. In this controller, we'll write a constructor where we'll instantiate both the Elasticsearch PHP client and the Elastica client so we can use them in future videos in this and the next section. We'll create a new route group where we'll place all of our Elasticsearch PHP client route and we'll write code to query Elasticsearch using the Elasticsearch PHP client. Let's get started. Here in Sublime, the first thing we're going to want to do is open our routes slash web.php file. This is where we're going to create all the routes that we're going to use to write our code to query Elasticsearch. Now that we've got this file open, we're going to want to create a controller so that we can create some routes pointing to some functions in our controller. Do that, let's head over to the command line. Here in my terminal, I've connected to my Vagrant machine, and I'm in my Elasticsearch Laravel application directory. I'm going to run php artisan make controller. I'm going to call this client controller, since this is where we're going to write all the code to use our two different PHP clients for Elasticsearch. Once I run this command, I've got my controller created successfully, and we can head back to Sublime and open it up. Back in Sublime, we're going to open HTTP controllers client controller.php. This is the new controller that we just created in the command line. The first thing we're going to want to do in this controller is add two new lines right here after line five. We're going to use Elasticsearch slash client builder and Elastica slash client as Elastica client. These are the two things we'll need to use build both our Elasticsearch PHP client and our Elastica client in order to start writing some code to query the Elasticsearch server. We'll want to add two properties to the top of our controller. Right here, we're going to add protected.elasticsearch and protected.elastica. These will be the variables that we'll use in our constructor to instantiate an Elasticsearch PHP client and an Elastica client that we'll be able to use in all of the routes that we write in this controller. Now we'll add the constructor where we can set up both of these clients. Inside of this constructor, what I'm going to do is say this Elasticsearch is equal to client builder, create, create a new client builder, and I'll call build on the client builder. This will build a new Elasticsearch client and set it to our property. Next, what we're going to do is set up our Elastica client. In order to do this, we need to create a little configuration variable. In this configuration array, I'm setting the host port in the index. The host is localhost. The port is 9200. Both of those are default. The index is the pets index that we've already created in our Elasticsearch server. Next, we're going to set this Elastica is equal to new Elastica client and pass in our config. Now we've got our Elastica client set up and our Elasticsearch client set up. We can start creating functions, creating routes, and writing some code and querying our Elasticsearch server. The first function we're going to add in our controller is to test out our Elasticsearch PHP client. We're going to call this function Elasticsearch test, since we're just going to write a little bit of code here to connect to our Elasticsearch server and see how this client works. Before I put any code inside of this function, I'm going to head over to the web.php file that we opened earlier and write a route to use this function in our controller. Here in the web.php file, we have our default route that just returns the welcome view. I'm going to delete this since we're not going to use that route in our project. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new route group where we're going to put all of our Elasticsearch routes as we write more throughout this section. I'm going to use the route prefix, pass Elasticsearch, 
This will prefix all of our routes slash Elasticsearch slash the routes that we create. Within this route group, we're going to create our first route. Call this one test. So this will be accessible at slash Elasticsearch slash test. And this route will use our client controller and the Elasticsearch test function that we just wrote. Back in our controller, we're going to add a little bit of code to our Elasticsearch test function. The first thing I'm going to add is just dump. I'm going to dump out this Elasticsearch. This will print out our Elasticsearch client on the page in a nice, pretty, little explorable format. If we're curious about the internals of our client, just let us dig around and see what that PHP object looks like. The next thing we're going to do is retrieve a document that we already indexed in a previous section. We're going to do this using the Elasticsearch PHP client that we instantiated in our constructor. In order to do that, we have to create what I'm going to call the params array. This is an array of parameters that we're going to pass to our Elasticsearch PHP client. Every time we write a query using our Elasticsearch PHP client in this section, we're going to have to create this parameters array. And every time we create it, it's going to look similar with just a few changes. So every time we create this params array, we're going to be using the same index because everything we do in this course is going to use the pets index we created on our Elasticsearch server. Next, we're going to have to specify a type. In this case, we've only created one type so far, and that's the dog type. Later on in this section and the next section, we'll create some different types, but for now, our type is dog, and this is where the parameters array will start to vary based on the kind of query that you're trying to execute against the Elasticsearch server. In this case, we're just trying to retrieve a document, so all we need to add now is the ID of the document that we want to retrieve. In this case, we're going to retrieve ID number one. This was the first document we inserted into our dog type. Once we have our parameters array all set up, in order to get the response from our Elasticsearch server, I'm going to create a new variable called response. I'm going to set that equal to this Elasticsearch. We're going to call get on our Elasticsearch client. I'm going to pass our parameters array. This will execute a query using our Elasticsearch client, calling the get method. We're going to pass in our parameters. And from there, we have the response stored as our response variable. We're going to call the same dump, passing in our response. Now, when we head to the browser, we'll be able to see our Elasticsearch client on the page. We'll be able to see the response that we got back hopefully containing the document that we indexed in Elasticsearch. So let's go check it out. I've headed over to my browser, and I've browsed to elasticsearch.app slash elasticsearch slash test, which was the route that we set up for the function we wrote in our controller. At the top of the page here, you can see we've got our Elasticsearch PHP client output on the page. If you're curious about how this client looks, you can dig around in here, look at all the different properties of the PHP object that we dumped out on the page. Right below that is the document that we retrieved from our Elasticsearch server. So using that parameters array and the client that we instantiated in the constructor and our controller, we're able to query our Elasticsearch server and pull back a document from our pets index from our dog type with an ID of 1. If we expand the underscore source, we can see here that this is Susanna a two-year-old female dog. This was the first dog that we inserted into our dog type in the last section. So what we're able to do is successfully query our Elasticsearch server using the Elasticsearch PHP client. What we're going to do now is head back to Sublime and do the same thing with the Elastica client. So in this video, we created a new controller where we'll write all of the code as we test the Elasticsearch PHP client and the Elastica client. We successfully initiated both of these clients in the constructor, set them to properties on our controller so we can reuse that code later on. Then, using the Elasticsearch PHP client, we're able to successfully query our Elasticsearch server for a document that we indexed in a previous video. We output some information onto a web page and we browse there. And we're able to look at the structure of our Elasticsearch client and the structure of the response that we got back when we requested the document that we indexed earlier.